Hi, this is Graham Helfrich, Technical Advisor Manager for the Engineering Software here at IHS Market. Welcome to the weekly Did You Know episode where we learn how to do something of value that you probably didn't know about your IHS Market engineering software. Does this picture irritate anyone other than me? Sharing the armrest on an airplane is often usually won by whoever doesn't realize where their seat ends and your seat begins, right? Well, I've actually found some solutions, uh, so check out this armrest divider. Uh, it's actually pretty practical, but I'm trying to imagine what would happen if a huge person sat next to me on the plane and saw this. You know, the engineer in me kind of looks at this like a no-flow boundary that shouts, stay out of my reservoir. So let's imagine this. We have a green field and we start to develop it, spacing wells apart from each other. Now, if these were passengers in the picture, I'm sure they'd be pretty happy not even to share their space. Now, let's imagine this. More people keep boarding the plane. Oh, and here come some kids they're called child wells, but there is nothing small about them. Okay. Now on a passenger plane, we want to anticipate how many passengers are going to interact when their elbows are communicating. As reservoir engineers, what if we could quickly and easily predict how our wells will communicate as we evaluate well spacing and plan infill wells? Well, that's exactly what we're going to look at today in Harmony learning how we can evaluate the impact of infill wells. So here in Harmony, we have three producing wells on a pad. If we look, go look at their production history, we can see we have oil, that's the primary fluid, we have gas, water, and flowing pressures. We have about two years of production history here. Now each well has its own URM analysis and its own numerical history match. So we have estimates of permeability, fracture half length, etc. Right? Now since these wells are on a pad, we can go ahead and use the multi-well model in Harmony. Here we can see all three wells and their description is based on the individual well analysis we did first. Okay, so let's go ahead and forecast this as a pad. So again, this is a fully numerical multi-phase model. It works for oil, condensate, and volatile oil. Okay, we're just we're doing a 30 year forecast here as well as the history match and it's already done. Okay. So what we can do is we can go ahead and zoom in and we can use this slider bar to kind of look back in time. So back at the very beginning, before there was any production, we have 7,000 pounds equally throughout the reservoir. As we produce, we're getting drawdown, we're getting depletion, and this is basically present day. We still have initial pressure remaining kind of out here like this. As we do our 30 year forecast, we kind of kind of see how that pressure is going to expand and contact more reservoir. So at the end of a 30 year forecast, what I'm noticing is I still have quite high pressure remaining here between the laterals. And this is a clue that maybe we should consider some infill wells. And that's exactly what we're going to do now. So here I have everything set up the same, except I have these gray wells. These are potential infill wells that I want to consider as a scenario. Now we can turn on these infill wells like I am here to actually make them come alive in this forecast. We can go ahead and say forecast. Okay, so right now we're seeing the pressure from the producing wells. We're still doing a history match. And then in a minute, we should see these wells come online whenever we schedule them. There we go. Okay, now we see when it comes to pressure, we're accessing a lot more of this reservoir. By the way, when you want to control how your wells begin in the future, in this case, I've delayed the first well uh, by 12 months, and then it will start at a 2,000 pound flowing pressure. And the second infill well is delayed 24 months, and then it will come online. And we can even see the confirmation of these infill wells contributing to the entire pad production here. Okay. And just like before, we can very easily go through time and see how the saturations or pressure are changing on the pad. You saw how quick and easy this is, right? So let's look at this from a cumulative production comparison. 
So this is our total pad cum with only three wells, about 600,000 barrels, or with the extra two infill wells, we get almost a million barrels of oil. Okay, so that's it from a cum. What about economics? Well, of course, we've got that built into Harmony as well. So the first thing I'm looking at here is this is the discounted cash flow forecast, assuming just three wells. Or if we're going to consider the infill wells, we see the, the costs that we're incurring here and when we recover and what our ultimate cash flow will be in this case. And if, we can always look at this as a table as well. So that's really what I wanted to show you today, that that is actually possible. Now, if you're wondering, how do I learn this? Well, I've actually got a 40 minute tutorial. I'm gonna include a link in the description here for you. And it's really easy. It's gonna start from scratch so you can get familiar with how to do this. Now it's gonna teach you how to do everything from setting up a single well, numerical model really quickly. We're gonna be able to set up many wells on a pad. You're even going to be able to learn how to schedule or disable wells through time just like I'm showing here. And you'll even be able to learn how to land wells at different depths in your reservoir. Uh, and finally, if you want to, you can add different layers with different saturations. So this is all included in the 45 minute tutorial that I'll include a link for. Now I wanna mention a few other episodes, short videos that are relevant to this one that you may wanna check out. One of them is episode number 17. It's basically if you have PVT data, how do you use it for these reservoir models. Check that out. Episode number 18, if you have conventional wells and you want to investigate this same sort of development plan, including the economics, check out episode number 18 for conventional wells. If you want to learn a little bit more about the economics, how to use that in Harmony, check out episode number 32. If you have some uncertainty about your dew point, your bubble point, your API gravity, anything like that, check out episode number 33 to see how you can do a sensitivity on some of these properties. If you're interested in including some of your flowback data to try to improve your history match or look at cleanup times, check out episode number 36. It's pretty interesting. If you're curious about buildup time in unconventionals, check out episode number 38. If you are curious about what sort of production or water behavior you can expect if your fracks are going into zones with higher water saturation, check out episode number 39. If you have an overpressured reservoir or you think you have geomechanical effects going on, check out episode number 46 for uh, a bit of a lesson on, on what clues to look for to calibrate the geomechanical effects. Okay, but for your infill wells, what does this really mean for you today? Well, it means that you can evaluate well spacing really quickly and easily. It means that you can look at different timing for bringing your infill wells online. You can even look at different drawdown options to see how that'll impact the child well and the parent well. But I think the big takeaway here is that this is something the average engineer can do. Historically, we've had to rely on specialists to use very expensive, very complicated reservoir simulators to do exactly what I've just done in a few minutes. So anyone can do this. So the next time you're on a plane or making a decision about infill wells, just remember what I've shown you here today in Harmony. That's it. Thanks for your time. If you have any questions, give me a call or email and subscribe to be notified of the next episodes. Mm -hmm.